Welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about Newton's law of cooling. So this is the formula we often use when it comes to describing how temperature of an object is changing over some time t. So this, you can think of it as an exponential decay problem because if you take something warm, very hot, out from an oven and you let it cool off, eventually the temperature is going to reduce. So that's what we call it uh, Newton's law of cooling. The same formula, some variation to this formula can also be applied for heating up an object. We're going to only look at the cooling in this scenario. So T of T represents temperature at any given time T. T sub zero, which is the initial temperature of an object. T sub S will be the temperature of surrounding environment and K will be the proportional constant. Let's go ahead and derive this formula from a separable differential equation. So if T of T represent temperature at any given time T, so we can say that the rate of change of the object's temperature, so dT, dT, so the rate of change, change at, of the object at any given time T is going to be roughly proportional to the difference between its temperature and the temperature of the surrounding. So we can say proportional K. I'm using negative because over time it's going to cool off. So negative K times the difference between its temperature and the surrounding temperature. So that's the differential equation we set up. And this is a separable differential equation. And then we're going to impose an initial condition. Let's call it IC. The temperature at time zero is going to be T initial. We're going to impose that once we have the solution. Let's go ahead and separate the variables. So I'm going to go ahead and move DT to the right hand side, the little DT, and divide both sides by D, uh, T minus TS. So we have one over T minus TS DT, the big T, is equal to negative k times the little dt. Now I have separated the variables, now I can integrate. So we integrate both sides in respect to its own variables. So on the left hand side, we have ln of absolute value of t minus ts. ts is just a constant. The t is the function we're looking for. And this is equal to on the right hand side, you just get negative k times t plus the integration constant c. Now once we have done that, we can solve for this function right here, t of t, because that's what we're looking for. I'm going to go ahead and exponentiate both sides. So we exponentiate both sides. We have uh, the uh, absolute value of t minus ts is equal to e to the negative kt plus c. And here we're going to use the laws of exponents. I'm going to rewrite this as e to the negative kt times e to the c. Now e to the c is just a constant. Now I'm also going to move the absolute value from the left side. So we're going to write t minus ts is equal to plus and minus e to the c times e to the negative k times t. Now this is just a constant. Call it another constant. So let's pick A to stand for the plus and minus E to the C. So then our T of T minus TS is equal to some constant times E to the negative T. Now let's go ahead and solve for our function. Well, this is our function T. We can write that as T of T. So T is simply equal to A times E to the negative KT plus T sub S. If you want, you can also now bring in the little t. This is t of t is equal to a times e to the negative kt plus ts. Now let's impose the initial condition so we can find what a is. So here's the initial condition. t, when little t is zero, the initial time is gonna be t zero. So now we're going to apply that t of zero is t naught. So we have t of zero is t naught, so t naught is equal to a times e to the negative k times zero plus t sub s. So e to the negative k sub zero, well, that will be e to the zero, which is one. So you just have t naught is equal to a plus
plus Ts. So that means that our A is equal to T0 minus Ts. And now we can plug this in here and get our formula for this scenario. So the model is going to be T of T is equal to T naught minus Ts e to the negative Kt plus Ts. And that's the formula you saw beginning of this video. We introduced it, now we derived it. So now let's do an example. Suppose that a cup of soup cooled from 90 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius after 10 minutes. So this is an important piece of information. In a room whose temperature was 20 degrees Celsius. So we're going to use the Newton's law of cooling for this equation um, to answer the following problem. So how many, how much longer would it take for the soup to cool off um, 35 degrees Celsius? All right. So based on the first info, so the soup cooled from 90 to 60. So this is kind of like your initial temperature. It had 90 degrees Celsius. After 10 minutes, it was reduced to this much. So this is the temperature after 10 minutes, 60 degrees Celsius. Now this right here, 20 degrees Celsius, that's your room temperature. So that's Ts, the surrounding. So we know the initial temperature is 90. We know that the surrounding temperature is 20. And then we also know that the temperature after 10 minutes is 60. And we want to know how much longer it's going to take to cool off 35 degrees Celsius. All right, so based on this info, we can set up the model and figure out the K value. So first, we want to go ahead and find K. So I know that T of 10 is equal to 60. So 60 is equal to the initial temperature, 90, minus the surrounding temperature, 20, e to the negative K. Well, this was at 10 minutes. And then plus Ts, that's going to be 20. So that's the setup to find k. And now we're going to go ahead and simplify this algebraically. 90 minus 20, that's going to give us 70 e to the negative 10k. And then I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides. So that's going to give me 40. And now we can divide both sides by 70. So you'll have 4 over 7 is equal to equal negative uh, e to the negative 10k. Now we can solve for k by taking natural log. So we have ln of 4 over 7 is equal to negative 10k, which means k is going to be ln of 4 over 7 divided by negative 10. All right, so we found k. Now let's take, write down the model. So our model, the temperature at any given time t is equal to the initial temperature minus the uh, surrounding temperature, which is 70 e to the negative k. So the negative from the formula right here and the negative we just got, they cancel each other out. So we can just say 1 over 10 ln of 4 over 7 times t plus the surrounding temperature, which is 20. So this is your model to answer any question you want. We're going to answer that how much longer it's going to take so that's T. We're looking for the time it will take for the soup to cool to 35 degrees Celsius. So we know the final temperature, that's 35. So we want to know when will it reach this much. So 35 is equal to 70 e to the 1 over 10 ln of 4 over 7. T we're looking for plus 20. And we solve for T algebraically. We want to know what is T. We're going to subtract 20 first from both sides. So 35 minus 20, we get 15 is equal to 70 e to the... Now I'm going to simplify this expression a little bit more. So you can raise 1 tenth as a power for ln of 4 over 7. So you'll have ln of 4 over 7 to the power 1 tenth times t. Now here, using laws of logarithms, e and ln, we can cancel them. So 15 is equal to 70 times 4 over 7 will drop down as a base, you have 1 tenth times t, that's t over 1 tenth. And now I can divide both sides by 70, so you have 15 divided by 70, that would give you uh, that number, so 4 over 7 on the right hand side to the power 
t over 10. Now 15 over 70, I can simplify that to be um, 3 over 14 is equal to 4 over 7 to the power t over 10. And now I can take natural log on both sides. So you have ln of 3 over 14 is equal to ln of three uh, 4 over 7 to the power t over 10 and now t over 10 can come forward so you have t over 10 times ln of 4 over 7 and now we can solve for t multiply both sides by 10 so you have 10 ln of 3 over 14 and divide both sides by ln of 4 over 7 that's going to be our time now if you put this in your calculator this will give you about 27 minutes now we know that it took us, um, if you go back to the initial problem, it took us 10 minutes to reduce from 90 to 60 degrees. Now, how much longer will it take for it to cool off to 35 degrees? Well, it's going to take additional, um, I guess, uh, seven, 17 minutes. So if you want to know how much longer your time it's going to be 27 minutes minus 10 minutes because it took 10 minutes to reduce from 90 to 60. So this is going to take about 17 more minutes longer.